and I'm back here. My, I set the max persistent space debris to zero, and my game decided to crash. Then my recording software decided that that video file was finished, not paused. So, yeah, here we are. So yeah, I guess we're gonna count that as the first part of the video getting to the uh, to the apocalypse around the sun, and we are gonna finish this one when we land on Duna. I think that's gonna make a lot more sense. Oh, and we want to finish circularizing our orbits. Yeah, it still lags. I it happens whenever I'm recording. It doesn't lag like. S yeah. Anyway, we need to finish circularizing our orbits. Then we need to catch up to Duna some. And then we can do a transfer and enter its sphere of influence. So, yeah, it's kind of better to aim too far ahead of whichever planetary body, body you're trying to hit, and we still have plenty of fuel here, than too little, you know? Because then, if you aim too far ahead, you can still intercept it when you swing back around on the downward curve of your trajectory. Whereas, if you aim, if you don't aim far enough ahead, then you just miss it, period, and you're screwed. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, yeah, that doesn't really help us. Okay, six days here. Yeah. Okay. And good enough. Yeah, one ha one hour and forty three minutes in the Kerbin sphere of influence, where most of us previously stayed. That would be far too far away from the apoapsis to start our burn. Here, it's m a microscopic amount of time, really. We're already seventy six days two and a half months into our mission and it's gonna take more than a year to get there and get back again so it's really a it's more serious long-term mission than our short jaunts to the moon what the the map lags for some reason I don't know why and here we have a pretty similar amount of fuel left. So both vessels are doing fine on fuel, we should have plenty. So yeah, let's do this. We want more or less circular orbit so we can effectively transfer in much the same way from any part of it. And Duna has a slight eccentricity in its orbit. Its altitude varies from some 21 billion meters to 19 billion meters or so How f so it varies a little but that's okay since we can see at which point we're gonna enter its sphere of influence due to our orbital maps it's not like in the demo where you are screwed map wise and have to rely on luck to make your transfers. Here we actually know we're gonna hit something. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. So, yeah, at this point we just wait to, and since this, yeah, we just wait to catch up to Duna and we're gonna fly this craft since it's further ahead. We're gonna do our transfer burn with this one and then we're gonna do our transfer burn with the Duna 1 lander. And you can see the days just whizzing by. Yeah. Moho, Eve, 
and draw. I think I'm gonna visit Jewel and try to land on some of its moons. But we'll see, I guess. Yeah, and that's still. We are still too far behind at this. We need a bigger lead for our transfer burn. Need to aim further ahead of it than we would if we burn now. So, yeah, we keep waiting. And it's climbing towards the highest point of its orbit. And this is still not good enough. This angle, your the point. Ah! <coughs> Okay, say you push out your trajectory here, the angle that this and Duna would have to make is about 150 degrees or so. At least that's what the math says. So kind of aim, leave about 25-30 degrees between Duna and your ship and you should manage to make an intercept at some point if you cur as you curve your orbit outwards. And we've almost reached that angle, actually. Yeah, we're more or less there. Actually, yeah, bit closer is better than bit further. And this, uh, uh, should hit it. And uh, just to be sure, let's catch up a bit further. And at this altitude, you make one and a half orbits for every orbit Duna makes, or so. At least that's what my math, math says. If I And it seems to be more or less true from the observations I've made here. Anyway, we've caught up with it, so let's start our transfer burn then. Oh yeah, hope you're, hope you're enjoying this. So, yeah. I think I'm gonna go to Jewel next. And it's gonna lag again, which is gonna be a problem since we're gonna need to watch this trajectory, but not just yet. We're gonna have to wait for quite a bit since we are altering our orbit by several billion meters. And it means a delta V, I mean it means a speed change of like a thousand plus meters per second and since these engines are very weak even if they're efficient it's gonna take a bit yeah if I go I don't know what caused that but it happens when I'm in the map for whatever reason so I guess I can keep switching into the map occasionally and then I can once my orbit gets closer to Duna's orbit, I can start looking for... I can start watching this more carefully. And how's our fuel situation? Doing pretty well. Yeah. These guys have been screaming now for six and a half months. Well, something like that. Approximately, anyway. So, there's that. Okay. Yeah. And if I nudge it down a bit, it still lags, but... Yeah, it still lags, but apparently not quite as badly, it seems. Anyway, we keep burning until we start seeing an intercept. We might have to push our orbit quite a bit further out and catch Duna on the downward swing. But I kind of actually like that better since it's safer this way. Okay, we just keep burning until we start seeing an intercept. And then we fine tune it. And we're also gonna fine tune it once we get a bit closer to Duna's sphere of influence, too. Whoop. 
Yep, there it was. We had an intercept for a second, so let's turn around and slightly nudge ourselves in the opposite direction and see what we can get there. Coming down, coming... damn it. Not exactly that maneuverable with this transfer nacelle still attached. Okay. Yeah, just the barest smidge of engine power. Don't want to burn too aggressively here. Duna, Duna encounter. 98 days, 19 hours. We're gonna need that. Okay, and a periapsis of... 44 million. So that gives you some idea as to its sphere of influence. Let's see how low we can bring it. We want it at a more reasonable... Gods, the fucking lag! Gugh. Now, there's... yeah, that's as go good as it gets. 8,000 million... To, uh, sorry. <coughs> 8,000 million. 8 million... 8 million is good. I'm willing to take that. So now we switch to Duna 1 and do a transfer for Jeb. In his lander. Spimped out ride. And we're actually gonna wait. Well, just a smidge. Doesn't matter if we're at the periapsis or not. Damn it. Yeah. Okay, we're already pointed in the right direction, so let's just do our burn. Yeah, I just realized the encounter time for the command vehicle is gonna be... Let me adjust my headset there. Is gonna be slightly changed because we did nudge ourselves a little bit there. So I'm gonna go back and check that again in a minute. First we're gonna do this transfer burn and set ourselves an intercept trajectory. Now you want these to be slightly different because it gives you all the time you need to fly both vehicles, well do both sets of maneuvers separately without worrying, without having to worry about missing any windows. Well you know, the proper time for them I mean. Oh gods. Why does... and why are the landing legs deployed like so? Well, not that it particularly matters, but still... Okay, and how do we want to come in at Duna? Yeah, I think we want to do it pretty horizontally... but not too much? Set us up a periapsis of about, say, 15,000 meters or so, and then use it. Well, we'll see if any of the nuclear engines have fuel left or not. If they do, we're gonna use those to slow ourselves down, and then we're gonna come down a bit more vertically, use our parachutes to slow us down further, and then we're just gonna set down. Okay. Yeah, it's the map. This 
doesn't really seem to lag, but the map lags like crazy. And again and again. I have no idea why it does that. Yeah, it turned off the persistent space debris, so all of that is gone now. If that was the problem, that should be gone, but... Okay, we our trajectory is starting to look pretty similar to the command module's trajectory, so we might want to slow our thrusting down a bit. Just a bit, I'm gonna leave it at a third. I think it might be all the new planets and space base objects maybe okay look for encounters we should see one pretty soon then we're gonna cut the engines and okay come on don't hide from me baby come on Seriously, there's no way I could miss this. Not with the way this is set up. I, I mean, I shouldn't. There we go. 95 days. With the periapsis of... Show me the periapsis, you bastard. Oh, for fuck's sake. Again, we want to bring it down pretty low. This is pretty good. So, at this point, we have 95 days and 80 hours for the encounter. For periapsis, 96 and 8. Okay. Switch to Duna command and first. We're gonna stay on whichever will get there sooner. For now. Okay, zoom out, zoom out. Although it doesn't seem to lag when. Ooh, we're gonna get there pretty close together actually. 95.22, just 6 hours after the lander gets there. And at Periapsis in 96 and 10. Whoa, that's like really close. That's pretty simultaneous. So I guess we're flying Jeb for now. And once we get a bit closer, we might want to do an adjustment to bring our periapsis down to within a million meters but that's gonna happen in a bit well in a bit for us <laughs> those poor guys are gonna have to wait a couple of months <laughs> for it <laughs> but still and we're getting closer and that's as fast as the time warp can go so sit back and enjoy the trip guys <laughs> we're going to Mars well, Marsish planet, anyway. It's kind of a Mars analog, so it's kind of Mars. Only not really, but kinda. So yeah, we're going to Mars. Okay. Yeah, and Moho is apparently very hot. And because of that, difficult to land on. And that does sound like a challenge. Hmm. It has possibilities. Now, we need to get closer so that we can zoom in over there and see how we're coming in. Maybe we can adjust that. This might be close enough. 
can't get a clear idea just yet. Okay, so if I see just slowing down or speeding up won't do anything for us, but oh, I'm still time warped. But if we burn slightly northwards, that might just help. So let's no, that might just be the wrong way. Yeah, that's salt parts. That will only increase our perhaps. We want to lower it to within a million meters. Now, when you move from one sphere of influence to another, this altitude might change. I had a perhaps of 150 kilometers set up in my previous mission and I had to do another adjustment because after I transferred to Duna's sphere of influence I actually ended up on a trajectory that would have crushed m that would have led to me crashing straight into it so that's not good and of course you want to do this now because it allows you to do it with a hundred literally of the fuel you would spend otherwise altering that so really it makes a huge difference do it now when you, I mean when you get close enough to zoom in like this do it then this is the point in the mission when you want to do this and it's going up again well that might be as good as we're gonna get although guess we can see what happens if we nudge it to go a bit faster or a bit slower okay come on success this makes it go down and this is actually a pretty useful fuel saving thing the sooner you do a maneuver provided you do the right maneuver and in some cases you can't do the right maneuver until you get closer the sooner you do it the less fuel it takes it's a huge difference see now this is pretty much good enough so we're gonna leave it at that and we want to switch to oh damn it I didn't check the times because those are gonna be slightly different now and since they were so damn close together that's gonna make huge difference still how's this looking now it doesn't matter exactly how we okay so below okay so I guess we want to burn northwards and northwards is this way so since we are going to be landing anyway it doesn't matter exactly how our orbits look because once we launch we can head for whichever orbit allows us to set up the crew transfer most effectively anyway so it's not a huge difference yeah I guess we both ended up slightly below the ecliptic and the lander should have plenty of fuel left for altering its orbit and since we're gonna be doing a transfer in a pretty low orbit it's gonna be pretty easy actually okay yeah I on my test mission I ended up orbiting both of these in separate directions orbits you know heading the opposite way and at an angle but after I landed I did that I launched my lander in the right direction and the fuck Am I just gonna crash into it now? What the... Ok... 
behave and if I do this I encounter it sooner yeah that was a gonna crush into it thing yeah no we want to leave ourselves a nice reserve there so perhaps is in 6 7 for the command and for UJEP scrolling out okay periapsis six eight whoa that's really close Okay, so I guess we are switching to Duna command and we're gonna very carefully time warp until we hit the periapsis there and then we're gonna do the same for the lander. Yeah, you want to be really careful. It's very, very easy to overshoot because days just whiz by when you're at the highest setting and you're just gonna be in Tuna's influence. Well, we're gonna be in Tuna's influence for about a day. So stay away from the highest setting and be very careful because you will get a lag spike when you go from one sphere of influence to another. And if that happens wow that's tiny anyway if you're at the high setting you'll be out of there before you have a chance to do anything about it so be very very careful with that okay I hope I have this done right Well, we can afford a bit of extra fuel if we really have to. So it should be fine. Okay, and we're in the sphere of influence. Both moving inwards. There it is. We've actually made it here. How's our orbit looking? And not bad, not bad, we can work with this. You could probably set up your approach better, but my altitude, their altitude, yeah, a tiny bit behind. You could probably set this approach up to be more horizontal and, well yeah, you could probably set it up better on the approach phase, but this will do. This is good enough. Ike. Yeah, we might go to him someday, but not right now. Not right now, buddy. Later. Again, careful with the time warp. That would be a really stupid way to screw up a mission that's gone pretty damn well up to this point. So if you do this, do this very, very carefully. Well, the time warp part, anyway. There are some pretty easy ways to screw this up, but as long as you do a bit of planning and are careful, it should be fine. Oh, and that's their trajectory. Nice. Oh. Whoa. Bit too much there. 100 will do just fine. That's more than enough. So orbit both of these first then going for landing with Duna 1. This we are just gonna orbit and with Duna 1 we are actually gonna work on setting up a landing. So we are... well it's time for another maneuver so let's do our deceleration burn and enter orbit. Well we are actually pretty close I well, not really, but we're our orbit isn't that eccentric. Not that far off. Which is 
awesome. We might be able to set up horizontal orbit this time. Not that it matters that much and yeah, practice until you are comfortable with your skills at least in doing EVA crew exchanges you are gonna need those skills here you're really gonna need them this really is a whole new level it's nothing impossible of course but it does take a bit more planning and preparation and you do need a few skills to do this not the least of which the most important actually of which is the ability to plan ahead to just plan your mission figure out what you're going to need and then set things up so that you have it when you need it give yourself the resources you're gonna need later it's really important it's kind of what determines whatever you succeed or fail at whichever mission you attempt. Not so much with the le with the simpler ones like getting into orbit or landing on the moon, but yeah, it's an important thing and the more difficult the mission the more planning you need and the more easily you the more planning you have the more easily you succeed. Oh, how's that gonna look? Okay-ish. Wait, what? Wasn't that lower? I mean, further away time-wise. Just a little while ago. Think it might... What is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This fuel tank is almost spent, but we should have plenty of fuel for the return trip, cause I planned ahead, and I gave myself the resources I'm going to need. Which, hopefully you'll see, is why I'm going to succeed at this. Hopefully. Of course, having made that claim, if I don't succeed it's gonna be another embarrassing failure, of which we've had a few on this channel already. Well, we'll see. If I fail at this, at least you'll get a laugh out of it. But it would be a bummer. And we're gonna bring that in a ways and then leave this in a high orbit. well out of reach of Ike it's good, how's the fuel looking still have some in here strangely enough and all of my RCS just in case I need it for the orbital rendezvous <laughs> so let's switch to the lander and go for the li uh, sorry go for the, the landing and we have a great deal of fuel left actually which is just fine yeah that's an orbit at an angle so yeah our ships ended up pretty close together you probably won't get them this close together there's probably gonna be at least a few days between them so you won't have to watch this as carefully but you know. Still, it's very unlikely that you'll have, with this distance and this amount of time involved in traveling such distances, it's extremely unlikely that you're almost impossibly so that you'll have to do a maneuver with both ships at exactly the same time. You should still have minutes between maneuvers at least. Anyway let's turn on those transfer engines and just go for it yeah this has a pretty low gravity and the atmosphere really doesn't really get in the way of taking off so we should be fine 
So how do we want to play this? Yeah, we're probably gonna want to adjust our orbit a bit but first we're gonna want to have an orbit and then circularize it but yeah we might want a slightly more horizontal orbit on this just to make things easier for us but we should manage now there's some pretty high mountains on this I encountered one that was like 3 kilometers above the ground so be careful the amount of altitude in which your parachutes get to work might be very small cause you know the parachutes start working at 8000 meters if mountains are as high as 3000 meters that's just 5000 meters for braking with parachutes and that's not a lot you probably want to have your engines running on at least low from the moment you get in there just in case parachutes will help but I don't think you can rely on them entirely at the very least you're gonna have to use them when you uh, when you come in for your actual landing because any ship that's capable of reliably taking off again is gonna be so heavy that no well you're gonna need far too many parachutes for landing safely on parachutes alone to actually stick that many on your ship this ship has eight big ones and one small one and it will not be enough we're gonna need our rockets to land ourselves safely so take that into account when you do this if you choose to attempt this this is a really fun game but it does require that you use your brain so you do need to think these things through just a little bit in order to do this stuff it's nothing truly insane it's perfectly doable but it does require some thought so you know think things through and it will help a great deal with your missions now this mission actually made me wish I knew the proper physics for orbital mechanics because it would have been so much easier to just calculate it than doing it through trial and error and still well that's that yeah see the thing is I want to land on the sunny side But our orbit doesn't really take us over the sunny side. Although I suppose I could. 270 is this way, if you can see my mouse cursor. So I suppose I could do a slight alteration there. Turn my orbit just a bit and leave it at that there we go yeah we don't need a lot just a little bit and how's that orbital duration one uh, two hours so yeah we can work with that we can work with it okay that is good enough don't want to taste too much fuel. How much do we have left? Nearly a full fuel tank. That's more than enough. These engines are just for getting there and setting up our approach. If we have any left over for the actual landing part, that's a bonus. A reserve which we somehow managed not to use in a horrible accident where we made a mistake which threatened the entire mission so you know we do have a bit of extra fuel it seems 
which is a good thing. Still, the way you get that extra reserve, well, first you have to plan it in, but second, try to make adjustments whenever you get the chance. You know, do things the efficient way. You know, do your maneuvers as quickly as you can do them, accurately and safely, rather than waiting until the last second and stuff like that. I mean, we saved a great deal of fuel just by nudging our eventual intersection with this planet down to just um, well, bringing down our eventual perapsis to within uh, just over one million meters. I mean, that saved us a huge amount of fuel right there. So you know, stuff like this, it does make difference. I'm gonna set my orbit up at a hundred thousand. Trade do I trade? Yeah, I rotate. I orbit this way, so... Okay. So we're gonna have to do another orbit before we set up our approach, which is okay. Okay, and we're gonna want to circularize anyway because we want our periapsis to be, once we bring it in, to be over this point. So yeah, let's turn this ship. And yeah, this doesn't have any RCS because I don't really need any for the landing. So yeah, that also allows you to keep the number of parts down in order to avoid lag and to save some weight. This on the other hand needs to be a bit more maneuverable since it might have to do some transfer stuff. Although again I can do that on engines and then just use the RCS pack that the crew members have. Last time I was within 11-12 kilometers when I did the crew transfer and it worked out just fine. You just need parallel orbits which and the ships to be relatively close together which in a low parallel orbit is pretty doable and of course you have to be careful but it's nothing impossible okay so nearly there What's the fuel looking like? Ah, the lag, come on, you son of a... Ah, more than half a tank, excellent. Yeah, we're gonna have a reserve for our approach. Which we're gonna burn up as we come in for our landing. Because we're pretty close to the ground once we start using parachutes and it can that part can be a bit iffy. Whoa. Huh. Interesting. Uh, ah. Yeah, actually, that will do just fine. So, half tank of fuel left. Let's wait till we hit the sunny side. North Pole, I think. Yeah, North Pole. Just passed over it. The atmosphere starts at 45,000 here. So make an orbit above 50,000 if you want it to be stable. Do that and you're going to be fine. And we're in the atmosphere at 41,000. That is good enough. Gonna use the physical time warp which allows you to warp well inside the atmosphere but not while you're actually thrusting with your engines. So, take that into account people. 
this won't allow you to do your burns faster. I know it's actually not that important, but ah, still. Anyway, I think you might be able to turn your ship. Oh yeah, you can turn your ship. You just can't burn. I think, or you can. Okay, slow the F down. So you can't accelerate time warp when you're actually burning, but if you enter it beforehand then you can't bu can burn, actually. Wow, that's huge. Awesome. Just for s and we can see crap. Ah eh. And we've switched to surface speed. S shit just got real. Okay. And let's get rid of some of that speed because we are coming in pretty hot. Be the atmosphere here is very thin, so let's not put any more stress on our parachute than we have to. And we don't want to get rid of these when we are too close to the ground. I'd rather not waste time on shutting down engines, getting rid of them and then starting up the next set when we are really close to the ground I'd rather just pre-burn them now and get rid of them and I could just eject them but it would be good to get rid of some of this speed and we don't really need to get rid of them Yeah, and I want to stop my lateral movement and come almost straight down with my parachute because I didn't like how iffy turning my ship at the last horizontally at the last uh, sorry vertically at the last second seemed. Can we? Huh? So it said I couldn't before. Huh? It's weird. We're actually thrusting downwards. That's not a good idea. Let's do this, yay, so parachute can open at 8000. You can see the efficiency going slowly down because we are in the atmosphere, but it's not a lot of atmosphere and it's almost gone anyway. So we get rid of this, then we deploy the parachutes and yeah. We are pretty well set up. Uh, let's get rid of some of this vertical speed actually and I could probably just en land on engines alone but I want to save the fuel here we go and this will save us some Okay, this will give us a bit of extra. This will save us some delta V. So yeah, there are our parachutes, and there's the ground coming up horribly, horribly, horribly fast. Want to turn our ship as vertically as possible here. Come on, hold it there. There go those stages. Yeah, okay. And yeah. We are using a bit of fuel to do this, but it's cool. Actually, let's keep this like so. And yeah, a bit exciting, but we should be fine. And we should see our shadow any second now. Shadow, shadow, where are you, shadow? Ok, 
Okay. And we're down. And we're down. Let's do this. And go plant our flag. Come on, get down that trap. And yeah, we are on a slight slope. Let go. Yeah, this should have more than enough fuel to get up there and orbit and do some orbital adjustments. So, and I think it's safer to use your engines to slow yourself down. So, yeah. As long as you have the central part left, we whoa, don't die. We as long as this central tank is full, you should be able to get back into orbit just fine. So don't worry about that. And I'm gonna cut the video here, and I'm actually gonna leave this guy here for a while and. I'm gonna do the return trip in a day or two. Crap. Let's get him on board. So, yeah. Duna has been conquered. So next time, EVA crew transfer to the command module and the trip back home. Hope you enjoyed this and see you guys.